Hey there, Cherie here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm here today to share with you all some of my plans for this weekend. Um, I have some sewing things that I want to work on and then I have some sewing planning <laughs> that I plan to get done. So uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So one of the first things that I'm going to share with you all today is uh, some of the little leather bits that I'm going to try to play around with. Uh, my last video is actually an unboxing and review of the fourth and final uh, sewing machine option uh, that a lucky winner will uh, get to choose from uh, during my National Sewing Month giveaway. So September was National Sewing Month. I ran a month long giveaway, all kinds of videos, all kinds of comments, lots of people entered. Um, I reviewed four different sewing machines and the winner will get to choose one of those machines um, and I'll be gifting it to them. So anyway, the last sewing machine that I put up is that Janome HD 1000, which is for sewing heavy duty fabrics. And so I had so much fun demoing that and testing it to see if it was so through these thick leathers that I have. I have a lot of projects that I want to work on and incorporate these leather bits. I don't want to use my uh, higher end quilting and sewing machine because, you know, sometimes if you hit thick fabric and it can uh, mess up the timing of the machine and the next thing you know, you got to take it in for service $200 later, right? So instead I wanted to get a separate sewing machine that I can just take through the ringer. I can sew all kinds of things and not be worried about messing up my really nice and a little bit more sensitive <laughs> uh, computerized sewing machine. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing around with that. So I'm gonna show you some of the fabrics, uh, some of the leathers that I pulled to just start playing around, testing out some ideas. I also have a beautiful denim that I pulled because I need to measure this for an order. Um, and I'm not sure if they bought all this remaining, but if there's any left on the bolt, I'm gonna buy it for myself because uh, I wanna make something with denim also using that machine. Uh, and anyway, so yeah, we're gonna talk about sewing up thick uh, fabrics, the leathers, things like that. And then the next thing I'm gonna talk about are some quilting projects that I have planned and I'm gonna show you uh, some fun things with quilts. I also pulled the first uh, Stylog patterns that I'm going to use, um, not that I'm going to use, that I'm gonna sew up rather for my Style Art capsule wardrobe and I've matched fabrics for those. So I'm gonna show you those. And then the final thing we're gonna talk about is uh, I got in my first know me pattern um, and so I'm going to show you guys what I'm thinking the fabrics that I'm thinking about using I have some options maybe you guys will give some input to help me down select uh, the fabrics um, but I definitely want to make uh, one of those soon I think that's going to be my first coat that I make of the season I have some vintage coat patterns that I want to sew up but I need to grade them up blah blah so I think I'm going to actually cut into this this weekend and have that be my way of like easing into all the different coats that I do want to make this winter so yeah let's get started with the leather bits and the denim all right, friends, so my cutting table is overflowing right now um, with uh, all the, not all of them, but these are the older uh, leather scrap bits. I bought these actually either last year or the year before. Um, they were, it was like super cheap and I wanted to play around with some things. And I did, like I cut up a couple of these and I just played around with them on my sewing machine. And that's where I saw that like once I do some of the folding over, um, you know, my machine just, it was always, you know, it just didn't seem happy with sewing through the thick <laughs> layers of the leather. And so that's when I started my little hunt and thinking about getting, um, a heavy duty sewing machine that was pretty basic, but that could just churn through all the thick upholstery and leather and vinyl and things like that. So yeah, I have a lot of leather scraps. I showed you all in my um, last SR fabric haul video that I bought some more uh, fabric scraps. These I'm going to do the practice with and then with those scraps, I'm gonna dig in and try to really 
and make some proper wallets and maybe some eyeglass cases and stuff like that. That's what I'm thinking. And then I got some skins uh, also in that haul. So many pretty colors. These, this was like just a big bag of scraps that I found really cheap. Um, and so, yeah, some of them will just be like little tabs that I'll put on tote bags. Some of them will be handles. Um, some of them will be like little coin purses. I'm just going to sew them up and see, you know, what I can get with different things. And then here I pulled some skin, some full skins that I'll uh, start to play with also. I have this gorgeous, like icy, creamy, silver one. That color showing up more silver and less cream than it really is. Um, let me see if I put something else next to it, if it shifts. Yeah, it's not showing the true color, it's really pretty. And then here, this is a really big skin that I got. This is looking more red, but it's actually hot pink, or fuchsia, I should say. So this will be really cool. So these skins are large enough where I can like make nice big tote bags. Um, then I have this one. This one is also really big. It's a patent leather, which is super cool. These are all also from SR Harris. I got those. I got these uh, the first time I went there. And so, yeah, really, really, really cool. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, playing around with that machine. I'll insert a picture of it. And I will leave a link in the description box to my demo of that sewing machine in case any of you are in the market for a heavy duty sewing machine. And you want to check that out and see how it did sewing up the leather. And then I did pick up here because again, I have a bunch of tote bags that I want to make. So I picked up these just rolls. These are just rolls of thick leather um, that's used for strapping to make straps. So I'm going to um, play around with attaching those to some tote bags using that sewing machine. It's really thick. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And the fabric that I'm using for the tote bag is also thick. So it's a lot to go through. And we will give that sewing machine a test to see how that works. And so, yeah, these will be some upcoming projects that you guys will see on the channel soon. Now, let me get the denim. All right, guys, and here's this gorgeous red denim. This is not super, super thick. It's not like the hard uh, jean denim. It is 100, uh, I think it's 97% cotton with 3% stretch in it. And uh, this is one of the many fabrics that I've added to the store recently. This is an European import. Um, and so, yeah, not a lot of it available. And actually, I, I have to measure it because... The person who bought it uh, actually today, <laughs> which is why I pulled it out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get that order set and see if there's enough for me to buy um, because I have one project that I want to use this in as a part of my vintage capsule collection. Um, again, I put that video up. I'll leave that video linked in the description box also if you missed it, um, but I have red incorporated in that vintage um, capsule collection and I thought this red denim would play in well for one of the patterns that I'm thinking about doing. So we'll see if I get lucky with that. I have another color um, that I can use in the denim that I haven't added to the shop yet. Um, if this is not enough left over after I cut this customer's order. They order four yards, so <laughs> we have to see what's left on there. All right, so next up, I'm going to share with you all um, a couple quilts. Really, I pulled one main quilt that I want to show with you all because I mentioned uh, how I like to do quilting uh, when I shared the third sewing machine, uh, which was that brother uh, that came with the uh, stippling foot and the table extension. So I really like, I mean, I do the straight line quilting and stitch in the ditch and stuff like that sometimes, but I really, really love um, free motion quilting. That's kind of my favorite way of quilting um, my quilts and my totes and things like that. So first I'll just, just because there, I, I hold a couple. I have this whole shelf of quilts. I actually used to sell quilts. I used to sell them in my store, obviously. And then I actually have a whole nother Etsy store that I used to sell my handmade goods in. It's still there. It's just, I have it closed down again. Um, 
because I just I didn't have time to keep up with things and you know anyway I'm not gonna go into all that but I'm gonna be reopening that for the holidays actually pretty soon um, and so I was just going through inventory and things I've made a bunch of new stuff to stock that up for my customers um, who like to get Christmas gifts uh, made by me and so yeah I've been busy um, getting all that stuff organized uh, again, making new things. So I've been sneaking in sewing products with my sewing for myself. Um, and I'll share uh, some of the things uh, that I've put in the shop at some point. Uh, but anyway, so this is one of the quilts that's going to go in there. This is so cute. Look at that. And I like to make the, like this is intended to be like a baby size quilt. I like to make them a little bit bigger because they can really grow with the toddler into the toddler stage with them uh but yeah i love 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 and see here i just did the you know regular straight stitching the back is red um love this fabric combination and so you know yeah sometimes this kind of like especially when it's like super geometric like this you know this big log cabin block is basically like one huge log cabin block. This is a really, really easy quilt to make. If you guys want me to show you how to make exactly this quilt, well, not with these fabrics, but this kind of quilt, it's so easy. You can get this done in a day. Um, maybe I'll do that for you guys if enough people are interested. Uh, another one, this is actually, yeah, this quilt was actually published in a magazine. <laughs> as a part of a little um collection that i did intended for babies i'll have to pull that maybe i'll add that magazine um those images to the community tab it was published in a um a magazine that's put out uh it was called uh 101 patchwork projects and i had four or five projects in that magazine um and it was, they were all together. They all coordinated. And it was basically like, you know, a little set to make for um, mom and baby. And so one of the things was this really quick and easy quilt. And so that magazine, you know, that magazine was printed. And then, you know, that issue was over. And what they did was, I think they took some of their favorite projects from the magazine. And then they put it into... A little booklet that sold at Joanne's stores. So this quilt, and look at the back. I use this uh, polka dot batik uh, print. And I also use that in the border. And so, uh, yeah, I um, I think when I when I do an update on some of the quilts that I finished up. We'll have like a little quilty chat video. We'll have a little quilty chat and I'll pull out the magazines that um, my quilt patterns have been published in just to share with you guys. Um, I'm thinking about remaking, redoing some of those with some uh, modern fabrics, not modern, but like some new fabrics. And I might make those patterns available. Or maybe I'll kit them. I don't know. I've been thinking about something like that. I uh, that's why I went through and I pulled. I started pulling some projects out, like like this quilt. I I won't sell because <laughs> it's one of my published quilts. So my published quilts they will not get sold. Um, but anyway, here's another one. This is a smaller version of a quilt, and I made a really big one. I'll try to. Uh, Put a, a picture of the big one it was a big log cabin one and that one sold already um, but I did uh, I used the same fabrics these were uh, Liberty of London did a collection of cotton quilters weight cotton fabrics and so um, I did a couple I did different things with that um, I made some quilted pillow shams also um, so I still I think I have this one and one more left that I'll be putting in the shop and then this is uh the one quilt that i have left and let me show you up close you see it better actually on the wrong side so this is that free motion stippling quilting that i love to do so there's no pattern there's no rhyme or reason i just sit and i just flow and i just 
I just quilt. And so I really, really love it. It's much, you know, it's harder to see on the right side because of the printed fabrics, which is kind of cool. But I basically just kept doing like looped kind of like leaf patterns, floral patterns, because I used all these floral fabrics. And so, yeah. And this back fabric is really gorgeous. This is one of my Japanese imports. So anyway, just wanted to share those with you guys real quick and mainly to show an example. See here, let me see if I can get up and show you that flower. Can you see that flower? Oh my gosh, I love, love, love free motion quilting so much. And so I'm actually like excited to get back into it. I'm excited to get back into quilting and uh, sharing my quilts with people. And so, yeah, I have a bunch of new quilts. I have a sketchbook filled with quilt designs. I have a bunch of things that I want to sample out and try, um, but I'm not allowing myself to do that until I get the rest of these tops uh, uh, quilted up and finished. Because yeah, it just, to me, the fabric matching and the piecing the top together is like so fun that I could just keep doing that over and over again. Um, but I'm trying to be more disciplined and actually finishing up these projects and yeah, getting them out into the world. So I went on and pulled one. I put up a short the other day where I showed you some of the quilt tops that <laughs> are ready and waiting to get layered and quilted and bound. Um, I'm gonna try to get as many as I can done throughout the fall and get them listed in my handmade shop. Um, this is one that I might end up keeping for myself though, I'm not sure, because I do really love the colors. Um, I don't need any more quilts, but it's not about need, right? It's, quilts are about wanting. <laughs> and so yeah, this is uh, just a really fun, basic patchwork one that I think the colors are so lovely. And I'll tell you more about all the different fabrics in this one once I get it done. But this is going to be the one that I will um, get layered uh, today because I actually I already have the backing pieced for this also. Uh, once you get over a certain size in your quilt, you have to start piecing your backings together um, unless you get the wide width fabric, which I do have some of those and I have that for some of the quilts, but, but not, not every fabric designer puts out wide width um, backing fabrics and I tend not to use like just solid fabrics. You usually can get them in like solid, solid white, solid, you know, pastels and things like that. But I like my quilts to have um, a print and a pattern typically on both sides and so I piece them. So yeah, that's the quilt talk for today. Now let's get into the style art patterns that I pulled. All right, so the Style Arc capsule is going to be the capsule that I start working on first. I'm also going to then at some point start intermixing and in sewing the vintage capsule collection that I shared with you all. Um, and then I'll also be working on uh, some of the pieces that are going to be in my third capsule collection, which I'm not sharing anything about. I was going to share it, but I'm like, I'm still flushing things out like I know the overall idea and I want to save this one to surprise you guys when it's done so because it's, it's like it's turned into like a whole thing and I'm really really excited about it and I think it would be fun to at least sew up some of the pieces to show you so you understand like where I'm going with that capsule but anyway I um pulled the first uh, style art patterns that I'm going to go ahead and work on. I decided to work on the dresses first, mainly because with a lot of the separates, I'm still kind of hemming and hawing on like which ones I'm going to use for which top, etc. so that I can really maximize my mix and match. I did decide to incorporate one skirt. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm still working on that, but I'm recording everything. I will um, release all of that in, you know, as a series where I show you like the full thought process that I went into when I was, you know, pulling in the extra fabrics. I've already shown you a chunk of the fabrics, but there are more fabrics that I've pulled and mixed in, including some that I'm going to show you here. But I'm going to take you through that whole process um, just so you can see how I thought about putting together the capsule wardrobe. 
um, that I'm making. But anyway, let's move on. So the first pattern that I pulled is this dress pattern. And so I shared already all the patterns that I'm using. I'll link to that video in the description box um, in case you missed that one. But you can see the style art patterns that I pulled. Um, well, it's like pretty much every style art pattern that I own. And <laughs> the fabric that I pulled to use um, as a kind of jumping point for that. Because it's a lot of pieces. Um, but I pulled this fabric, which... I shared with you guys in an earlier video because I was going to use this to make another one of those Wildwood wrap dresses. But this fabric, I actually I went to cut it and I realized that this fabric mixes in so well with the fabrics that I'm using in the Style Art collection. Um, and I kind of feel like yeah, I really wanted to make another Wildwood, but now I kind of don't. I want to make these other dresses. So I want to use this fabric. So I went on and pulled this fabric to use uh, in this style art collection. And again, so I pulled this fabric to use for this dress. So I think that's going to be fun. And I'm going to read this in case it's not showing up well. Um, it's the Naomi woven dress this next one let me get this out of the um, plastic this was the one that is the most recent edition this was a new release and i really wanted to sew it the millicent wrap dress so i got this in and i pulled this fabric now this is a rayon chalet i believe that I got at Joann Fabrics and I got a bunch of it because it was on clearance for like a few bucks a yard and I made a top with it which was kind of a fail because the top is huge. I made a large based on my measurements and it's like three sizes too big. Um, so yeah, I have, I'm, I'm probably going to alter that top because I do like it overall but I need to take it in a lot. Um, but Anyway, I have a bunch of this left over and that fabric, uh, that pattern rather, needs a good chunk of fabric. And so I pulled this and, and yeah, it has all those colors that fit in so nicely with the other fabrics that were the jumping point for the capsule collection. So I think that'll be fun. And if I have enough of this left over, I will make um, maybe one of the, uh, I have that one tank top pattern uh, that would be like a nice layering basic. And so if I have enough fabric, which I should, there's a lot of fabric here, um, I will use that to do that just to get another couple pieces uh, added into that wardrobe. This next one, I'm going to save that for last. This next one, you'll recognize this dot also from an earlier haul plans video. Um, I decided to use this fabric. This is also from Joanne Fabrics. And... I'm going to use this pattern here for that dress. And so this is called the Asha dress. So I think that'll be cute. And I don't know, I might do this one sleeveless so that in fall and winter, I'll layer a sweater on top of it. And then that way it'll just transition into summer and spring as well if I don't have the sleeves on it. And so this could be like a really nice four season dress. So that's what I'm thinking about with that. And then the final one I'll show you. I've had this fabric from Art Gallery Fabrics for a while. And I got a lot of it because I loved it. And I think I caught it on sale. And so it's a dark floral. I feel like it's a really dark navy. Um, their coating on their fabrics are so, so nice. This is an uh, Ocotec uh, certified print. They really, that company really just has a lovely, lovely uh, cotton substrate that they print their fabrics on. And so again, this pulls in those colors from the capsule. I have that pink, I have that green, I have that yellow, I have that green. Um, and so I think that'll be nice. 
and then I pulled this pattern for that. So it's kind of a shirt dress and again with the short sleeves I feel like it can be at least a three season but I, I would wear I wear dark florals also in the summertime here in Minnesota. So really with that sleeve length it could be a four season dress and again I have lots of um, cardigans planned in the capsule already. I showed you the patterns and so I can layer that. I can layer it with just some you know basic sweaters and or blazer uh, when it's cold out but then it also uh, takes me into spring and summer. So yeah this could be another four season dress option for me. Actually I finally I'll link to these patterns in the description box or actually I finally started filling in my um, Amazon storefront. Um, I've just been like sharing links but I finally have gone in and made lists uh, for sewing, lists for gardening, and lists for like home organization and kitchen stuff. So I'm gradually populating that. Um, I'll put that broad link in there in case anyone just wants to go and like browse around um, and see. And these lists are things that I've bought with my own money that I love and recommend. These are not things um, I get emails all the time about people sending stuff to me and reviewing it. I don't know. I'm not into that. I Listen, I don't have any issues with people who do do that. Um, but I I buy enough stuff on my own. <laughs> that I, you know, I, I don't even have enough time to review all those things. And so those lists are really things that I bought and I like. Um, or I plan to try like of course all the patterns I haven't used yet But these are things that I bought and I'm just recommending them to you guys to have a look at and you can decide if That's something that you want to have for yourself. So yeah, those are the four items dresses that I'm going to start the style arc capsule wardrobe with there's two there are two more dress patterns uh, that are for knit fabrics and I'm going to be using some of the knits that I already showed you guys in the style arc um, video that capsule reveal video um, and so yeah you'll see all this out again I'm my idea is to just try to get some things sewn up and then just start to gradually roll this out in stages so that the videos are at least like connected to each other in time so that I'm not putting out one now and then it's like eight weeks before I put out another one so you can really see it a little bit closer together in time. So that's what I'm thinking here. Plus I can concentrate and sew and if I change my mind about something I don't feel like oh my gosh I already said in the video that I was going to do XYZ. I get worked up about that sometimes. <laughs> uh, but anyway let's move on to the final uh, thing that I'm going to share in this video. Manomi, Manomi, Manomi pattern. All right, let me get those fabrics out. Okay, friends, so my no me pattern came in, as I just showed you, and I mentioned to you guys that I'm just starting off with one. It was my favorite one from the collection. I knew immediately when I saw the promo for it that that would be the one that I would buy. It's this uh, coat by Beauty J'adore. And let me just, I mean, she's fierce. She's fierce. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the coat. Look at how she's, I mean, her posing, the attitude, the vibe, it's like a whole thing. And so originally when I saw this, I was like, I'm going to make a green coat. And now I'm not so sure. So let me just tell you, I pulled a bunch of wools actually off the shelf <laughs> from right back here. Oh, you can't see it from that side. Let me see. So you see all the space, you see the little empty one. So anyway, I pulled a bunch of wool and um, yeah, I got to measure a couple of them out to make sure I even have enough to consider them. But I pulled the colors that spoke the most to me with this coat because I do, first I was like, oh, I'm going to make one in black, but it's like, and I do need a black wool coat. But I have plenty of other patterns to use for that. I feel like I want a statement color um, I want to do one in solid and I want to do one in print I want to have a statement print long wool coat like this 
And so, yeah, let me show you the two prints that I pulled. And these are two that actually I'm going to be adding to the store later today. Let me get this up close for y'all. This is a uh, cotton velvet, 100% cotton velvet uh, that's imported from Europe. It's gorgeous. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. So it's 100% cotton. It has that uh, pink, that fuchsia pink, and that turquoise and some orange. So really gorgeous fall colors. Um, I think this would be fabulous. It's a, a velvet or velveteen, um, but it's 100% cotton. And so it just, it's a super luxe feeling fabric. It's going to have a great weight. And yeah, I want a floral print. I want a printed coat. I really do. I'm trying to get the thing open so you can see the inside. I mean, this coat's going to be lined anyway, but you can see the print is just on the front. And it's not an embossment. It's like a print. Um, so this is a contender. And then I have a bunch of other coats that I want to make. And so this would work with any of those as well. Um, but I also pulled this and I don't, I'm hemming and hawing about this one. Because again, I keep telling y'all that I don't like animal print. But then I pulled this and I was like, that could be kind of a cool coat though. Only thing is, I don't know if this coat is too long. Like, is it going to be too much? Um, but I like that it has this like almost like neon chartreuse yellowish green in there. This is like a pale blue gray. And then of course it has the brown. But I don't know, a part of me feels like, like that could be a really cool statement coat. Awesome. So this is also a 100% cotton uh, velveteen kind of fabric. This is from Anna Maria Horner's Field Study uh, Collection, 54 inches wide. I'm going to be putting this uh, in the Etsy store actually later today also. And so, yeah, let me know in the comments if you think I should use that first one, the burgundy floral, or if you think I should make a coat, this coat with the animal print. I just don't know if the animal print will be like too much. Like part of me feels like, and I could shorten it. Part of me feels like the animal print would be a cute shorter jacket and then wear that with like my faux leather pants and some um, like ankle boots. Like I feel like that would be like a better vibe than this like the long coat. I feel like the long coat could read like robish. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments. Help me help me out with that. And then let me get the solid color fabrics that I've pulled for this. All right, so I pulled two, four, five wools from my stash. These are fabrics that I've had sitting on the shelf already. Um, oh my gosh, this is so good. This is green. The color it is, is so silky soft. That could be great. Only thing with this is I might not. I need three and a quarter three and three quarter yards, something like that. And I think this might only be three yards. Is this the right side? Yes, this is the right side of the fabric. That's the wrong side. This is the right side. Somewhere on here is the tag. I think this has like a little bit of mohair in it. It's gorgeous. So that's option one. Option two, again, this color. Ooh, I love this color so much. This one I definitely have enough of, which is a bonus. And I think it's a similar kind of wool. No, I don't think this one has that mohair on it. The texture is a little bit different. The color is incredible. Why does it match my lipstick today? Almost. So that's option two. And then this like deep orange so the right side of this one is on the inside but i thought this deep orange could be gorgeous it's a little bit like a pumpkin-y orange it has a little bit red in it so it's not like you know like neon bright orange so these colors are just i think it's a good one 
I love this. And I have enough of this one, I think. Again, I'm going to have to measure these all out. That Actually, the green one is the only one that I don't think I have four yards of. So all these other ones I think are fine. And then here, this is, this I should correct myself. That first one is more like a true orange. This is the pumpkin orange. Look at that. This is like the green one. So it has like a little bit of like a mohair in there. It's so good. And then the last one. Let me see. See, this is another one that I was considering. I don't think I have enough of this one. I feel like a yellow would be great. This is a mustard. Ooh, I almost like the mustard better. This one is called Canary Yellow. This is Canary Yellow. Which again, as a statement coat, it makes a statement. But I almost feel like again, this shade of yellow might do me better as a shorter coat. This one, I should have pulled this one. Look at this mustard golden yellow. Ooh, I love. So see, it's going to be hard to decide. It's going to be hard to decide. So these are all 100% wool. Or mostly wool. This one, this one is a goldenrod wool nylon cashmere brushed coating. So that's what it is. It's cashmere in there, not mohair. I misspoke. So yeah. These are my, from Michael Kors. I got these all of them I'm pretty sure well I'm not sure most of them are from fabric mark fabrics for sure they do these like deep sales 70% off on their wools and that's when I swoop in and <laughs> and get some so yeah let me know in the comments if you have um you know any partiality to any of these solid color fabrics, let me know. Let me know if you have a partiality towards either of the prints. I have to make a decision because I want to cut out the coat first before I start with the dresses. I feel like I want to make the coat. I want to make the coat. I want to make this coat. So I think this is going to be my first project, a uh, new project that I'm going to start up on. So yeah, let me know. Before we go, this is my red Bryn McCall's uh, dress. I have to um, adjust the elastic. I just have it like pinned right now. So I need to pull the elastic a little tighter. Um, make it like this. And then I will get that, you know, permanently stitched down. I threw it on because I was trying it on to uh, adjust the elastic so I could do that. That's the last step that I need to do. And I'm like, oh, I'll wear this while I record. And so it's not 100% <laughs> so I'll adjust that elastic and make that a little tighter so that sits a little bit more snug here and uh, yeah this is the one I showed you that that I do you know line my bodice that's the one alteration that I made to this dress um, yeah but I love the Bryn McCall's and I just think it's super cute yeah and I'm excited that I have a red one now so anyway Bryn McCall's it's McCall's 8035 calls 8035 I'm pretty sure I'll link it in the description box also okay all right guys that is it for today I hope you guys are all well I look forward to seeing you back here on the channel again soon I the next video should be the giveaway live but I might have I might have one more live that I'm going to sneak in before then I'll let you know watch the community tab just come back to the channel, look out and see if I have any live scheduled. But I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the live soon so we can hang out, have a bunch of fun again, okay? All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.